Fleischner, and in a few minutes, I have the dubious honor of introducing one of Tulsa's, um, now let me take that back, one of the Southwest's most decorated advertising men ever who graduated from these very hollowed halls. Um, now I'm told that it would be borderline blasphemous to quote anyone when talking at Will Rogers, unless it's from Will Rogers himself or the inductee. So let me start with what Will Rogers said about the business of advertising. America's greatest humorist said, advertising is the art of convincing people to spend money they don't have for something they don't need. Well, he's certainly right about it being an art, but it's also a science. And when done correctly, it does sell products. But you know that that's okay. It's capitalism at its finest. And nothing happens until a sale is made. And that sale creates economy. And our honoree has created economy extremely well in this area for over 50 years. So first, a little background on Hink. Here at Will Rogers, he wrote uh, the sports column for the Tulsa School Life, the school paper. And he lettered three years in baseball as a catcher. He was a natural athlete, making second team All-State in 1964. In fact, baseball had such an impact on him, he's left strict instructions with his wife, Rosie, to have his ashes sprinkled behind home plate at Yankee Stadium when he's gone. <laughs> Rosie, good luck on pulling that one off. <laughs> his father was also an advertising legend in Tulsa, and I have no doubt creativity was already in Bill's DNA when he decided to get his Bachelor's of Science degree in broadcast journalism in 1969, just a few blocks from here, to you. And it didn't take him long to take his trademark humor and blend it with solid advertising principles to become one of the most well-known advertising creative people in the Southwest. Between 1969 and 1991, he worked at most of Oklahoma's largest ad agencies on Oklahoma's largest accounts as a senior VP and executive creative director. And he celebrated his 25th anniversary of owning Hinkle Creative Services in May of 2016. The creative awards he has won are too numerous to mention, both locally and nationally. But to show you just how high he's regarded among his peers, uh, he was named Tulsa's Advertising Executive of the Year in 1994. But I think what Hank will be most remembered for will be what he created at the University of Tulsa, TU's very first comprehensive ad program, now called the Brand Center. He started this real-life curriculum in 1994, and to this day, he leads other adjunct professors in this town in teaching the process and disciplines of brand building to students who actually line up to take his classes on the principles of advertising, media uh, strategy, and concept development. And just like everything else he touches, he excelled and was recognized for it, being named the TU Faculty Member of the Year in 2007 by the Panhellenic Council, and again in 2009 by TU Student Athletes, and Educator of the Year that very same year from the American Advertising Federation. And it, the awards don't stop there. TU also, has also honored him as the 2012 recipient of the J. Pascal Twyman Award for outstanding service to the university for service above and beyond the call of duty. And in 2017, he was inducted into the University of Tulsa's Communication Hall of Fame. And it all started right here in these halls and on this stage. I started with Will Rogers, so I'm, I'll close with Will Rogers. If you want to be successful, it's just this simple. Know what you're doing, love what you're doing, and believe in what you're doing. Bill embodies every word of that quote. Of course, I'd be remiss in not giving you one of my favorite Hinkle quotes. Uh, when Bill and I worked together, and, and we worked together a lot over the years, I'd ask him how much it was going to cost to shoot one of my client's commercials, and he would always tell me with all the confidence and, and, and feelings that, that he could muster, he'd just say, Fred, it's gonna cost a lot, but that's just an estimate. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't a numbers guy. Budgets meant nothing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct honor to introduce my good friend since 1967, a former agency colleague and a Tulsa advertising creative legend. Uh, and now he'll be the newest inductee into the Will Rogers Hall of Fame. Watch the video on Mr. Bill. <laughs>
Bill Hinkle is widely recognized for his achievements in advertising and higher education. After graduating from the University of Tulsa, Bill honed his creative skills at several of Tulsa's most successful advertising agencies, starting as a copywriter, becoming a senior vice president and executive creative director, then founding his own firm, Hinkle Creative Services. In the process, he's won hundreds of creative and marketing awards. In one of advertising's most prestigious creative competitions, New York's One Show, Bill won gold and silver awards. He has won 28 National Addy Awards, the largest competition for creative excellence in advertising. He's also won more than 500 local Addies and numerous Best of Show awards. His award-winning campaigns include those for Tulsa Federal Credit Union, Tulsa Community College, Tulsa State Fair, Hillcrest Healthcare System, and Tulsa Opera, among many others. He was awarded the Silver Addy by the Tulsa Advertising Federation as Advertising Executive of the Year. The local chapter of American Women in Radio and Television named Bill Account Executive of the Year and Creative Person of the Year three times. In 1994, Bill began a new phase of his career when he co-founded an advertising program at the University of Tulsa. As an adjunct professor, he's known for motivating young adults to follow their dreams, and he's been named Faculty Member of the Year by three different TU student groups. He also received the J. Pascal Twyman Award for Service Above and Beyond the Call of Duty to the University and was inducted into the University of Tulsa Communications Hall of Fame. He's been president of the TU Alumni Association and has served on the boards of Emergency Infant Services, Palmer Drug Abuse Program, American Theater Company, Hillcrest Hospital, Symphony of Tulsa, Theater Tulsa, Tulsa Sports Commission, and Tulsa Philharmonic. Bill and his wife Rosie have endowed a scholarship at TU as he continues his varied and impressive record of community service. Do we have any teachers here today? Would you stand, please, just for fun? Just for the record, I totally support everything you're doing, and I admire all of you heroes out there. I really do. As I uh, stand here on this stage, I remember back, uh, I even shudder to say this, 54 years ago, uh, when I was both a director and a performer for the annual school production called Rogers Roundup. Now, the, the, the word talent might be a stretch, because uh, we really weren't very good. In fact, a lot of people thought we were just plain awful. But, you know, when you have an audience that's full of nothing but parents and grandparents, what could possibly go wrong? I also remember squatting behind home plate as the catcher for the Ropers baseball team right out in that direction, playing against people who today I still remain the closest of friends, one of whom will be uh, there tonight at the Renaissance. Uh, Steve Turnbow, the legendary public relations guru of Schnocky Turnbow Frank, who played for Nathan Hale. We had some incredible games with Nathan Hale. Unfortunately for Rogers, we lost most of them. <laughs> Joe Johnson of the Hall of Fame Committee told me several weeks ago that I had around three minutes for my acceptance speech and that my talk was supposed to drive the students into a maniacal display of unbridled passion and frenzy as it relates to spurring them on to greater heights regarding their future. I can't believe I even wrote that. <laughs> well, I've never done anything in my life in three minutes, especially when I have command of a microphone. But in the spirit of Joe Johnson's request to keep it short and sweet, here's my advice. Just marry somebody who's rich.
I know the last thing that the students want to hear is some old dude lecturing them on how to succeed, but I'm going to anyway, well, because I'm up here and you're down there and you really can't go anywhere else. So you're going to listen to me one way or the other. Three things that I would like for you to consider and then I promise to shut up. Discover something that you love and then make that your profession. Don't let anybody else guide you into a job, not your parents, not your friends, nobody. It's your decision. Then once you find something you love, attack it with all the muster and passion and determination you can find. Once I realized the New York Yankees didn't want a five foot six inch catcher, plan B, which to tell you the truth was always plan A, advertising, rose to the top. That was 50 years ago. Today, each morning when I wake up, I thank the good Lord that I'm in the advertising business. I love it that much. My good friend and introducer, Fred Fleischner, has always said this, and it's true. Find something to do that you love, and you'll never really work a day in your life. That is so true. I had a student in my TU Principles of Advertising class a few years back who was here from Argentina. Her dad sent her to TU to study petroleum marketing because, well, if you didn't know this, TU is widely recognized for that field of study. Frankly, she was a lousy student. Gorgeous, but lousy. Now, trust me, you have to really apply yourself to do poorly in one of my advertising classes. Uh, and she overachieved in being awful. <laughs> she came to my office uh, one day over on Peoria when I had my agency offices over there, and she, and she broke down crying uh, because she was failing. Later telling me she hated petroleum marketing and never wanted to do that in the first place. I said, okay, so what do you want to do? She said, I want to be a chef. I love to create in the kitchen and I love to cook. And I said to her, so go be a chef. And she said, my dad will kill me. And I said, well, I doubt seriously he will actually kill you. He might chase you around the house with a sharp instrument, but I don't think he'll actually result to stabbing. Um, and I don't think he really wants you to be miserable. She went on to become the head chef at a major hotel in San Francisco, and I still get emails from her to this day, and that was 20 years ago. Number two, be a purple cow. Everyone knows what a brown cow is, that's because there are so many of them. Not, but a purple cow, not many of those. And because of that, they're certain to be noticed. Simple attention, special attention to the word noticed. A purple cow lives by one specific rule. If it's good, how do you make it better? Once you've made it better, how do you make it great? And then how do you turn great into remarkable? Being a purple cow means you're not afraid to fail. Way too many times we spend too much energy simply trying to fit in, to not be noticed, not make a ruckus, always gathered in bunches called grades, lined up in vertical rows in standardized classrooms, consistently coloring within the lines, worrying about getting sent to the principal's office when we should be worrying about how to get into Harvard or Yale or that top 50 private institution a few blocks over here called the University of Tulsa. And yes, that was a shameless plug. <laughs> Being a purple cow always means it's you who didn't fail, only your idea or your product. And that simply means you get another opportunity to dust yourself off and try again, hopefully with yet another exciting, unique, over-the-top, let's roll the dice effort. So I say to all of you fabulous Roger students, take a risk, take a chance, be unique, 
be a purple cow, and always keep this in the back of your mind, safe is boring and no one cares. My last suggestion, be a great communicator. There has never been an article on the internet that I've read from HR people at companies who hire high school or college graduates that hasn't included excellent communication skills as a prerequisite for even being considered for a job. In other words, your ability to write and speak. It's always in the top five, many times the number one employer demand. Excellent communication skills, or in other words, how well you write and how well you speak. Never ever discount how important your writing and speaking skills are. I'm sure you're well aware of this in today's world. We spend most of our time emailing and texting. Many times, even when we're sitting right across the room from the person we're talking to. From an old dude's perspective, I think that's not only a shame, but incredibly irresponsible. One of these days, you're going to have to actually talk to someone face to face in order to land a job, and that won't happen through a text or an email. So do yourself a favor. Learn how to tell a story, your story. Learn how to tell a joke instead of just sharing it online. Understand the importance of great people skills, conversation, persuasion, selling yourself. Embrace it. Learn to love it. And finally, do your best to get over your fear of public speaking and I can guarantee you it will take you places you never imagined. Okay, I said I would quit. I lied. No, I said. <laughs> my sincere thanks to the Will Rogers Hall of Fame Committee for this fabulous honor. My thanks to Marcia Baker, who nominated me. More thanks to Fred Fleischner for his introductory remarks. Even more thanks to my sister Sherry, a 1960 Rogers graduate, by the way who came here from New York City for this occasion. And finally, because I won't be able to go home if I don't say this, to my dearest lovely bride of 32 years, Rosie, for putting up with me, for I'm sure she believes this has been a literal eternity. <laughs> Thank you, and go Rovers.